Shut up and sit down. Welcome back to another MX Bikes track building tips video. I'm going to show you guys how you can set custom pit positions on your track. All right, so first off, I recommend doing these custom pit positions after you have completed everything else in your race data file, your RDF file. You set your grid, you set your splits, you set your uh, checkpoints, because once you start editing uh, these custom pit positions, if you make a change to your RDF file in any way, it's going to overwrite those custom positions. There is a way, which I'm going to show you in my workflow, how to easily copy them back. It just gets to be a hassle if you have to keep doing that. So best idea, do this at the very end after you know all your other things are working properly and you're good to go. All right, let's get started. So the first thing, when you're in track ed, you're modifying your RDF and you're in your pits, you have your generate pits window open. You'll notice you can only set your pits in some form of a grid layout or one row of things, multiple columns. Uh, you can change the angle to be whatever you want. That's fine. Problem is you can't individually set each one of those pit positions. So in order to do this, the easiest way I found, you know, I only have 10 pit positions on this track. Uh, so very minimal work. You guys have 40 pits. Uh, that's a lot of work, but it's very doable. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my thing. I have 10 columns. Really all that we care about is this pit position one. We don't care about any of these other things. And what I want to do is I want to set each pit position next to one of these cars down here, car, van, truck. Uh, so what I'm going to do is you can use your pointer. And that's a nice thing about track ed right now is I can see the X and the Z position. So what I want to do is say, okay, I want it next to this. Uh, so that's 230 and 153. We'll go over to our pit position. Make sure it's sit on absolute. And what was it again? 153. 153, I will add it a little, move it a little over. 230, 231. There we go. So it will be right there. Now at this point in time, what you're going to do is you're going to save this. Save your RDF file. I'm going to come over here, hit save. Just overwrite it. And now, now what we need to do is we need to go look at that RDF file. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of it. Go over here. Let's open our track project folder. Go into our track project folder. Look for our RDF. Now at this point in time, what I want you to do is make a copy of that. And we are going to call, call this our custom pits. Now you need to do this because we're going to keep copying our custom pits into it. All right. And what I want you to do is select both of those RDF files and we're going to open them in Notepad++. All right. We have our custom, we have our original and let's move that to another view. And okay. So this is so we can see both of them at one time. And so if you scroll down in your original and we will see, we'll get to a pit lane has our number of stalls, it has our start position, X and Z. Again, that is what the track editor is using to set that whole grid and set it all up. But if you notice down here, each one of our stalls, the zero, one, it has a long latitude and the angle. Now you may think, oh, I could just come into this file, set my X and Z coordinates and the angle. I'll be good. I can do that really fast just by looking back on track ed and getting the X and Z coordinates can't do that because it's stored in this file with the long and lat and the angle relative to the closest position of the center line. Just like we did in the previous tutorial with the photo position, Pobozo decided to do it the same way with this. So I don't know exactly why he did it that way. Must have something to do maybe with some previous games and that was just his system he used. Would have been really nice if he could just set the X and Z and the angle uh, and it would just put the position there. So again, what we want to do though, we're going to use this stall zero as our template for all of these. So let's go ahead and copy that. Go over to your custom pits, copy, 
and it's already in there. We don't have to paste it. So that's stall zero. So now we're going to go work on our second one. So let's go back over to track ed. And now our second one, we want to move over here. But again, we're only working with this first one here because this is the one it's easy to copy with. And that's the actual position we want to use. So let's go over and let's uh, move that. So that's about 238 and 154. 238 and 154 and we'll go a little farther over 239 okay so that's that again same process let's go to save not our custom pits save it as our original go like that and now what we're going to do go back to your notepad plus plus over here back in notepad plus plus and you should get the notice that it was updated you want to do that and now we can see that we have a new values for that. So again, we're working on our second one. So that is stall one, our original is stall zero. Remember they start at zero. We're gonna come over here and we are gonna copy that in, save our custom pits. Now, at this point in time, if you wanted to go into the game and test each one of these pit positions, which you might wanna do just to make sure it's in the very correct one, uh, what you would do is come over to your track builder helper, and pretty much just say copy to mods folder. Now what you can do is go back into the game, uh, open your track, and your first spawn position should be that latest one that you're working on. So you wanna do this for each time that you set that first position. And then you can go into the game, check your position, looks good, you're good to go, move on to the next one. So let's do one more. Uh, let's just do that, go back to track ed, and let's say, we want to put it somewhere else. We're going to put it way up here. So we're going to go kind of hard to see that. Let's go 69 th minus 35. Oh, sorry. That was the long and lat. See, I'm even getting mixed up. So we are going to go 217, 207. seven and we will rotate that let's go 180 All right so there is our first position again we'll save that back over here and go back to notepad plus plus there we go reload it and now again this is our first one and we are down on our third one stall two copy that in and there we go. So again, once you've gone through all your pits, you've tested each one, then what you can do, you can literally just come over to your custom pits RDF, because remember, we've only been working with our first stall here in our main one. You'll just simply copy all of these, come over here, and you'll just paste over. Now, your main RDF file, has all your custom pits in it. And again, just remember, if you go back into TrackEd and you modify anything, let's say I come in here and I modify my grid and I, I set something on my grid, I'm just gonna move this over just a little bit. Now, if I save this, it is gonna totally overwrite all of my custom pit positions. And, and also note, your pit positions are not going to be uh, representative in track ed based on where you place them in your custom one. Man, again, it's going off of that top section where it just reads the X and Z for the whole grid layout of your pit positions. Anyways, that's all you guys have to do. I just, you know, there's just a couple of, of things you got to remember. Just don't overwrite. That's the main thing. And always have the backup of your custom pits, uh, your RDF file, and just copy this all over all these pit stalls in, and you should be good to go. Uh, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, check out my Discord. Uh, if you have any, any suggestions on uh, videos that you would like to see um, for MX Bikes track building, uh, any tips. Uh, anything that's not explained in any other tutorial videos that you guys have seen, let me know. I'll try to put something together for you. 
Thanks again. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a like. Leave me a comment. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you on the next one.